You know, despite being based on an enterprise Linux distribution, nobody really talks about running CentOS on their desktop. I mean, it's kind of sort of like OpenSUSE Leap, right? It's built around an enterprise core, but is free from any licensing agreements to use and stuff. So let's say for a moment that you wanted to use CentOS as your daily driver. Could you? Well, if you're familiar with Fedora, you might recognize this installer. It's Anaconda with an extra bell or whistle or two. Again, it's very similar to OpenSUSE and how you can pick the different packages and groups to install. It's not quite as comprehensive as Yast, but it's still good. In this episode, I want to see how CentOS 8 sizes up to other Linux desktops or workstations, so we're going to be using the workstation loadout, and we're going to be adding some niceties to make life on the desktop more uh, nice. Yeah. There are a few other things that this installer does a little bit differently than the Fedora installer, but since this isn't installer delves, we're just going to move right- Why look! It's GNOME! Who would have guessed? I suppose you could install other desktops on this, but it's not like OpenSUSE where there's several other desktops supported and pre-configured out of the box. You get GNOME. And here's the familiar GNOME welcome app, but when I tried to play one of these videos, it just... Poof! It was gone. Crashed or something. It's like, I guess it didn't want me to watch that video. Now in the way of system resources, an install with the packages I selected during the install weighs in at apparently only 5.5 gigabytes. That's remarkably light. The memory usage right after logging in is 1.3 gigabytes. Dang. So HTOP wasn't installed by default and it's not available in the default repos. You have to install the EPEL repo just to get it. And if you don't already know, the EPEL repo is like a repo of backports from Fedora, I guess. Mostly just like apps and stuff like that. Once we get the damn thing installed, we can see that the system is using 163 tasks and 388, almost 400 threads just sitting here at idle, not doing much of anything. So this is a plain Jane vanilla GNOME version 3.32. I hope you weren't expecting any customization options built in because there's nothing. Actually, there's a number of different colored CentOS backgrounds, which is a nice touch for an enterprise distro like this. There isn't really anything else to say about it though, this is just the GNOME desktop which you've probably seen about a dozen times already. The application it installed for the groups that I selected was actually it was quite sane. All of them were high quality and used a system theme, so none of the apps really felt out of place. I don't really have any complaints here, it's just standard apps that I would expect. In NeoFetch, we see the surprisingly cool looking CentOS logo with the crusty old kernel version 4.18 and 1,497 packages installed. It's using old version Bash 4.4. And it's GNOME with the default theme all the way to the bottom. Now printer support wasn't very good because my printer wasn't automatically detected and there weren't any drivers pre-installed or anything, so I probably missed a package group during the install because this seems like a weird omission for a workstation build. Bluetooth support was fine though, I used my phone as a test device again and CentOS and Android uh, communicated with each other perfectly. So for networking stuff, I must have missed something here too because there wasn't any DLNA media sharing through GNOME and Samba wasn't set up either. Direct SSH connections worked fine though, so cool. The encrypted internal drive needed root to mount, which I hate, but besides that it worked fine. There's no exfat support or rar file support out of the box, and I noticed that the 7-zip file took a weirdly long time to open and extract. I wasn't expecting CentOS to do great on the media section because, I mean, Fedora doesn't do very good, but I knew something was off when literally none of the video files opened and only like two of the audio files worked. Turns out the Wayland bug that affects open source NVIDIA drivers also affects this version of Totem or GNOME videos or something, which is uh, lovely. For the app image stuff, Caden Live didn't want to open because of a missing library, and opening a flat ref file with GNOME software caused it to hang and eventually just crash. When it finally did decide to work, GNOME software seemingly connected to Flathub without any help, so I was able to install those flat packs directly from Flathub, so that's cool, I guess. So before we move on to the app install segment, we should talk about RPM Fusion. Actually, there's not really much to talk about. CentOS 8 is really similar to Fedora. In fact, there's actually a semi-rolling version of CentOS called CentOS Stream. Anyway, this makes it super easy to integrate with the Fedora stuff in RPM Fusion. My NVIDIA drivers weren't installed by default, but there's a little section in RPM Fusion's website that shows how to install them on CentOS, and it worked perfectly too, didn't have any issues. 
RPM Fusion is also what you would use to get additional codecs and stuff like that RAR file, just like on Fedora. So I've decided to revamp the little gaming and performance section a bit. Mango HUD is an awesome little open source project that I've used before, and it puts that little overlay on the top left corner of the screen. You can actually move it anywhere, but that's the default spot. You can see the GPU and CPU usage, as well as the temperature, though I'm not sure why the CPU temperature isn't showing up. It also shows whether you're using OpenGL or Vulkan and the version, and of course the frame rate. There's that little graph on the bottom, it's basically the frame rate, or more specifically the amount of time it takes to render a frame, I think. But the point of the graph is to show a history of frame rate drops as a way to visualize lag spikes and things like that. Mango HUD also has a logging feature built in, so I can use it to benchmark games rather than using the synthetic benchmark, which is not only more interesting, but it's also way more real world. Anyway, this is Dirt, and as you can see, it looks and runs great. And guess what? I've been using the medium graphics preset for the benchmarks, but since we're going to start doing it live with Mango HUD, I cranked up the graphics to high, and we're still seeing great performance on this track. Next up is War Thunder. I didn't change the graphics preset here, which is high, by the way, but I don't know. This might actually be the smoothest I've ever seen the game run on this hardware. Maybe it's just me. It did crash at the very end though. I stopped recording it right before it crashed so it didn't capture it, but you can see on the community post, it was glorious timing. I'm adding XCOM 2 into the mix because I've been playing it lately and it doesn't run all that great even on good hardware. On CentOS though, it seems to be running pretty darn okay with the medium graphics preset. I mean, it wasn't fantastic, but pretty darn good, all things considered. I was expecting at least some hitching on explosions and stuff like that, but all in all, it played just fine without really any major stuttering. And of course we'll go out on GTA 5, which ran beautifully. Now Steam Play or Proton or whatever has the option of compiling the shaders before launching the game, and I'm wondering if that's what has been making it run so smooth lately. If you go back to previous DistroDevs episodes and compare the gameplay footage side by side, you'll see right away what I'm talking about here. So overall, I'm actually pretty impressed with CentOS. I'll be honest with you all. I actually thought that it was gonna be a train wreck. I thought that it wouldn't like my hardware. I thought that the packages would be difficult to get and it would just be a big pain to record and everything, but it's actually pretty damn good. There was that issue with GNOME videos where Wayland couldn't figure out the screen resolution or whatever, but the open source NVIDIA driver isn't well supported. When you install OpenSUSE through Yast and you're using the NVIDIA drivers, it actually warns you that those open source drivers are not well supported and bugs may happen. Overall though, I think that CentOS falls short of being a good out of the box workstation or desktop. It's missing some key components, but it's nothing you can't configure yourself. Or like with the printers and networking, I, maybe I missed something during the install or whatever, but still, there's some niggling issues and bugs that I think hold it back from being something you'd really want to run on your desktop. By the way, do you guys call it CentOS or CentOS? I don't know. But anyways, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you want to support me and the channel, I've got Patreon, where I do cool stuff and behind the scenes posts and all that stuff like that. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.